Good morning, everyone. We're gonna be do some fog walking. We got some foggy weather. Uh, we're gonna the route we're gonna take today is we are gonna go down onto the shore here because it is just a really foggy day, and we'll head down to the bridge. The Verrazano Bridge, and then we will. I guess we'll get into Bay Ridge and maybe walk around in some of the parks. We'll figure it out. Well, we are starting here at the Bay 8th Street exit of the Bell Parkway. Now they're doing a lot of road work. I'm going to show you all what's going on down here. They are adding multiple roads uh, into the area. They're widening the parkway. And uh, I'll show you one of those roads. I'm going to pretty much show you what's going away. Uh, eventually, this is going away right here. So this staircase that has been around since forever will be going away um if i turn to my right you'll see this is the new roadway you can see the street light poles have been installed this one was just installed yesterday i was watching them install this one yesterday um but basically what you're going to have is you're going to have a special, they're going to have like a special service road that goes all the way down to Bay Parkway from the exit of the Verrazano Bridge. Uh, this will be the way we, that you get onto the bike path in the future. But the road will come through here and continue on to the shoulder here. And then if you look on the other side, they're building the other road. It's hard to see in the fog, but you can see them doing that work there. It'll be like a half diamond configuration if any of you know uh, anything about road work. So I figured I'd show everybody. And you can see this, this wall, this will eventually be all filled in, leveled off. Uh, this is the wall here that they built that's going to get connected to here. And this is what the wall looks like on the other side. But like I said, this is this is going away, this whole staircase. So this will just be like a hill. Um, and eventually, you will not be able to uh, get on over here anymore. Now they are going to close this down. I was talking to the workers. They haven't decided how they're going to do it. They're either going to close it down and complete the road and reopen it or they're going to create the access road onto the bike path first. That way they can then take that down and not disrupt people's access onto the bike path. All right, and we are on the bike path. Now let's talk about the weather. <laughs> the weather has been brutal. Right now, I am walking in some serious winds if you look, you can't even really see anything. And in a second, I'll give you guys a look at the flag here. We have a flag here, and you can see how windy it is in a second. There you go. We'll zoom in there. You can see how windy it is. Um, so... We had some pretty good thunderstorms last night, too, at around 3 in the morning. I was tempted to get up and go out with the camera, but, you know, it's not a smart move when you can't plan it. I usually plan, when I do my thunderstorm walks, I, I do a lot of planning where I'm going to be and for safety re reasons, obviously, so 
not smart to just walk out into a thunderstorm and say, okay, let's start filming. <laughs> Temperature is 52, but it feels like it's in the low 40s with this uh, sea breeze coming in. There is more rain coming, so I do have my umbrella just in case. Now you can see all of the evidence of construction down here. You can see how foggy it is down here. It is just uh, extremely foggy. And the winds are on my back, so that helps. I don't... I don't think I would want to be walking in the other direction. So. I'm actually going to put my hood up because it is um, pretty chilly. There we go. I hope that doesn't mess up with the mic. Let me see here. Move the mic over a little bit. somebody walking towards me not a lot of people out in this you have to be like hardcore like uh, us to be out here nobody comes out here in this weather everybody stays in this is the type of weather I go out in And if you can hear the shore, that's uh, the waves. See how uh, rough this tur the surf is over here. I was gonna say how rough the turf is, <laughs> surf and turf. I mean, you can't see nothing down here. It is extremely foggy down here. The parkway is just about 100 yards to my left. And you can barely see it. You can see the traffic, but you can't see the, you can't, it's hard to see the other side of the parkway beyond the traffic. Some geese flying by. Try not to make you all feel dizzy with the spinning around. <laughs> no ships coming into the harbor right now. It would be nice. You'd hear a lot of the uh, fog horns and stuff, but there's nothing coming in and out of uh, New York Harbor at the moment. I could understand why. You know, after that accident they had with that Baltimore bridge being 
knocked down by those tankers by the uh, cargo ship we got a lot of those here and we just recently had a cargo ship lose power near the Verrazano Bridge so I would imagine they don't want anything coming in and out of here during this type of weather I'll show you guys the, the next road that's coming in here in a second. Here we go. So <clears throat> to continue on with this road work I was talking about, they have widened the parkway here. And if you look across on the other side of the parkway, they've created a, a road over there too. That's where the old uh, grassy, like knoll, grassy hill used to be. It's gone. So they shaved that all off and they created a road on that side. So you can pretty much see how much space they're creating down here. And the reason they're doing this is because of the bottleneck that occurs over here by the bridge. We'll be walking by that in a second. And the funny thing is you can kind of see why they're making the road. So when all these cars come off of the bridge and they merge onto the parkway over here, it just creates a, a major traffic mess. So this is the reason why they're widening everything. See some road workers right there. Now the bridge is less than a mile from, from where we are right now and we still cannot see it. So. You can see the traffic here this is kind of slowed down. And if you look across on the other side of the, the parkway, you can see that new roadway is uh, where that highway divider is. And then there's the wall. So between that divider and the wall is the new road that hasn't been opened yet. Got some people out early walking. We got this guy here and then a couple with a dog. And this is seagull weather. <laughs> You'll see a lot of seagulls out in this kind of weather. The fog is just so thick down here. You just barely start to make out the highway signage coming through. It's a highway signage that tells you 
this lane for the bridge, that lane for the rest of the highway. You can just barely start to see it coming in right now. And to my left is the Army Base, Fort Hamilton Army Base. If you're into photography like myself, this is usually a great day for pictures. Better if you have like a like a, a long lens, like a telephoto lens, because then you can con condense the scene down a lot and make it even look more foggy than it is. Because if you look up there on that hill, you can see some trees. So if you had a, a nice long zoom lens, you could just you just focus in on those trees and that would be your shot. You still can't see the bridge and the bridge is right here now. So we're not that far from the bridge <laughs> and you still can't see it. And this is what I was talking about earlier. This is the bottleneck. So this is what they're hoping to alleviate with the new roads. That is where the new road will begin. You can see where the wall kind of dips down. And you can see all these cars that come off of the bridge. And it's always been a messy, like a messy merge. It's a really, it could be even be a dangerous merge. So you have these cars coming off of the bridge right on the lane where most cars that are already on the parkway prior to this merge want to get off at the next exit. So this is where it creates that problem where if you want to get off the next exit, you got to contend with all these cars that are coming off the bridge. And then they want to go to the left lane they want to go into the center lane so and they don't have that problem on the other side because on the other side they have the the entrance to the bridge on that side uh, away from the traffic leaving, so. And some people might ask, well, why didn't they create this ramp into the center? And it was basically they didn't have enough room to do it. You would have had to really make a really sharp uh, grade down. So I guess this is the best they could do. We lost our uh, Welcome to Brooklyn sign in the recent windstorm. As you can see, it's gone. <laughs> see the pieces are here on the floor. We had, uh, we've, we've had some really nasty windstorms down here in the last couple of weeks. We had the one last night, overnight, we've just extreme winds, like 50 to 60 mile an hour winds. It seems like every day since March has been, it just, it's like always a tropical storm. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if the sun is out or if it's, if it's raining, it's just, it's been windy for, for weeks down here. And there's still no bridge, no view of the bridge. And we're here, we're at where the bridge is. The bridge should be right in front of us.
and we can just start to see the bridge now. Look at that. There it is. I mean, look at that. That's uh, that's a picture right there. What I'll do is I will get down low. Kind of give you some perspective here as this guy rides by. You could just barely make out the uh, bottoms of the tower there. Let's see how foggy it is down here. We'll be under the bridge in a few minutes. Well, in a few minutes, in about 60 seconds. Look at this. That's a cool picture. I've taken a picture like this many times. I mean, we get a lot of fog this time of year and in the fall, so. This is a picture you could take multiple times a year, so it's not a rare sight. But it's still always a cool thing to look at when it does happen. We'll get under the bridge here in a second and we'll look straight down. I'm gonna get center of the bridge and we'll get a, a view on both sides. So, so here we are. I don't know if you can he all hear that. There is a whistle that turns on down here in the fog. It is uh, located, I believe, either at Fort Wadsworth or it's located on the tower on the Staten Island side, but it's hard to hear. It just went off again. But whenever it's foggy down here, that thing is constantly blowing every, like, 10 seconds. There it goes again. We're going to leave the path here in a second. One last look at the bridge, and then we'll get into uh, the park. Now, right now, it is there is 
It feels like there's rain coming down, but I am not sure if that is water blowing off of the bridge, so I've got to wait until we get onto the street here to figure that out, and then if it's raining, I'll put the umbrella up. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was the bridge because it's not raining and there's no water hitting me anymore. So here's what we'll do. We'll change it up a bit. I was going to go into the park but we'll walk some of the streets. I guess what we'll do is we'll walk uh, down 4th Avenue for a little bit. Looks like I'm going to miss the light. This is a light you can usually cross against the red. As long as there's no traffic coming through. And there's my moment right here. I'm going to just go right across after this car. You know, when you live in the neighborhood for so many years, you, you, you kind of memorize the traffic patterns and the lights and everything. So you know when you can cross against a red light and stuff. This is John Paul Jones Park. There's the old, one of the old revolutionary cannons with the cannonballs resting on the grass there. We'll take a look at it. We'll cross over. I know people probably want to see it. So, now, this is a park that I used to come come to a lot as a kid. I got a lot of pictures of me and my sister and my mother down here in the park. So here we go. These are actual cannon rounds that were used in this cannon right here. It's a big cannon. All right, we'll get right back across the street. We timed that perfectly. <laughs> we were able to do all that in between lights. Got all these condo units here. I'm older than these condo units. These, I remember as a kid, this was just all a, this was just all a big bunch of undeveloped land back in the day. I even have, uh, I probably have some pictures laying around of this spot.
from from my father's photography years. These were built, I want to say they were built in the 80s. In the late 70s, early 80s. We are now back on the streets as you can see the fog has you know that it's a really foggy day when the fog makes it into the street area so do is uh you got a green light why are you sitting there he had a green light for like 10 seconds and uh i was already walking to the back so i was that's my way of telling you i'm not going to cross in front of you because sometimes uh cars will stop and they'll say it's like their way of saying you could go but i, I just I never cross in front of a car that stopped at a, you know, at a crosswalk if the light turns green. Because you, you really never know if they do see you. You can't see inside the car. You're just guessing. I mean, a person could be looking at their phone, right? Light turns green, they're still looking at the phone, and you think that they're letting you go and then they look up and hit the gas and you're on their hood. <laughs> so. I may not have mentioned this earlier, but it is early. I'm doing this walk early, around nine o'clock in the morning. So, so you might notice some places are closed still. Looks like people are going to work right now. We are heading in the direction of the train station. Uh, 95th Street train station is the first stop on the R line. So for those of you that might ride the R train on the other side, like in the Queen side, this is where this is our side where it begins. Man, it is really foggy out. The fog goes all the way down Fourth Avenue. It's not as thick uh, as it was when we were down on the shore. We got uh, St. Patrick's Church and St. Patrick's School across the street here. This is St. Patrick's School. And that's St. Patrick's right there. Not to be confused with, with uh, the St. Patrick's in New York City. But this church has been featured a few times in uh, that show that used to be on Blue Bloods. I believe this used to be their church in the show.
All right, so we're here at the 95th Street train station. You can see they're doing a lot of construction here. Fort Hamilton Diner, still alive and well. And there's the train station here. We also have the train station here. They're doing a lot of reconstruction work. You can also access the uh, train station at that car service there. If, you, if you'll notice, there's a staircase that goes down below. We are now on 5th Avenue, by the way. This is where 4th and 5th, this is where 5th Avenue starts. And I was just about to say we we're going to be passing by a firehouse. <laughs> so that truck just came out of the firehouse. to wait for this traffic. Kelly's Tavern. That is still around. I get a lot of questions about that. This is uh, one of the places I always get questions about. Is Kelly's Tavern still around? And I'm always like, yep, it's still here. And you could either enter it here on 5th Avenue or on the other side on 4th Avenue. We're going to be walking by that firehouse in a second. This guy is, he's riding back and forth on his scooter. He's looking for an address. I think he found it. No, he's thinking about it. Looks like he's asking this person if that's where he's supposed to be delivering. Here is the firehouse. Panda Sport is a place I've gone to. When I was young, we used to come here for all of our rollerblade needs, wheels, skates. They even had skateboards back in the day. This is the old KFC that's been closed since the pandemic. It got closed down because no one was, no one was eating. All right, I guess we'll walk this way. We're just, we're not taking a specific route. We're just walking around aimlessly, checking out the neighborhood. We're on uh, 92nd Street right now, going back onto 4th Avenue. I do want to get across the street, so I gotta wait for the light. A 
And we're gonna probably end the walk on 86th Street. You got the uh, car dealerships over here for the next couple of blocks. This is Bay Ridge Hyundai. You got Bay Ridge Mazda across the street. They have Bay Ridge Honda coming up. So if you want to buy a car, this is the area where you come to buy a car. Down on 5th Avenue, down over here where we're walking, is where they do the, they have a Bay Ridge Jeep, Bay Ridge Chrysler. You, you might have seen commercials on television advertising these guys. This is uh, where you go. Quad. Normally, you'll see a lot of cars parked out here, but uh, it's early. We are on 4th Avenue and 88th Street. We are going to end it right on 86th Street. So what we'll do is we'll keep going, we'll get to 86th Street, and we'll just end it on 5th Avenue. So we'll turn, take it down a block, see what everything looks like down there these days. It is still early out, you know, so that's why, if you notice, there's not a lot of people out right now.
what we'll do is we'll come down this street. This might be a street a lot of people never seen. These are the buses that are lined up for the B1. These are this is where the B1 terminates. It used to be the B64 back in the day and then they swapped them. They swapped the lines. You know, when Century 21 was open, this was, you would walk down this block and they even created a special crosswalk, but you would go in between the buildings because they had multiple uh, locations. Across the street here and over here. I remember back in the day, they had like a, like a red carpet or the street was painted red or something like that over here. I think I might even have that in one of my previous walks, like from back in the day. I guess he's uh, having a conversation with somebody that we can't see. It. We're going to come around the corner here. We'll end it right over by uh, Pizza Wagon. I can use some pizza right now, but it is too early. <laughs> I don't even think, even if they are open there, I don't doubt, I doubt they're selling pizza this early. You never know, though. Some places do. I know in the city, those 99 cents places, they start selling pizza at like 9 in the morning. He looks like he's open. It's very possible. Pizza for breakfast. Breakfast of champions. The B1. Stopping right in front of the pizza place. That's where we're going to stop. We're going to stop right here. Looks like they're op they're getting ready. But uh, here we go. There's a nice look here. Some people got off the bus. All right, everyone. I want to thank everybody for tagging along today. And I guess we will catch everyone. Well, I will. Well, that was close. I almost had an accident right on camera. Guy decided he was going to do a U-turn right in front of oncoming traffic. Well, anyway, let's end it. I was trying to say, I will catch everyone on the next one, so take care everyone.